the other things that we're going to cover for our first module here are connecting to the HMI, running the simulator, and using the system settings. So first, to connect to the HMI, um, you can either click download to target to download um, your project to the screen, whether it's a project you're downloading the first time or if you've made some changes and you're downloading it again. Or you can click manage target to um, change a couple other things on the screen. So I clicked manage target the first time and I can use this drop down arrow here to select the screen that I want to use. I'll select this first one here. And once I've selected a screen, you'll see that most of these buttons um, have become highlighted. I can click retrieve projects to load up all of the different projects on my screen in this window here. Um, the red icon is showing the project that is currently being shown on my screen. If I would like to change that, then I can click on a different one and click load project and the other project will become loaded instead. Um, I could click unload project to stop showing this project and my screen would just have no project uh, loaded. I would see a white screen. I could click Upload Project. This would allow me to extract the project, um, or copy it rather, from the HMI to my computer. Or I could delete a project that's not currently active uh, with Delete. Um, an important button here is Update Runtime, or sometimes it might say Install Runtime. The first time that you ever use one of your HMIs for the first time, it will not have JMobile runtime on it. So it's necessary to go into this manage target screen and install the runtime. Or whenever you are using a new version of JMobile for the first time, for example, when we release JMobile version 2.8 and you want to convert from 2.6 to 2.8, it'll be necessary to download the new version of the runtime onto your screen. And it's okay if you forget to do this because if you try to download the project normally with download the target, if your runtime on the target is out of date or not there yet, then when you click download, it will force you to download that project or download the runtime. And another way to download is just clicking this icon here or pressing control plus D and it will, um, it will take you back to that same window. You can also create an update package by choosing the selection here, update package, which will export your file um, or your project as a zip file. And you can store that zip file on a USB stick and plug it into the screen and upload the project that way, which is uh, a good way to do it if your screens are maybe out in the field already and you don't have easy access to uh, the Ethernet port or to a computer nearby. Downloading a project that way is usually pretty fast. The first time you download a new project, it, it might take around 30 seconds, but future downloads are usually 10 seconds or less. Sometimes it's still faster to use the simulator for testing, especially if you like to test a lot. Or you can also use the simulator for testing if you do not have a screen with you. So if I click the simulator icon, it's going to launch the simulator in another window. Um, when we start using this more later, we'll see some more stuff on my screen. Um, but right now it's just blank. I do want to show that by clicking this icon up here, I can change between uh, what we call an offline simulation or an online simulation. While I have these items checked off, it's in offline simulation mode. That means that JMobile Simulator is just going to make up some numbers to use instead of the actual Modbus TCP number. So instead of getting a communication error, it will just put a zero and I can edit that zero and change it to another number. If I uncheck these, then it will let me actually communicate with my PLC, which um, could be very good in case you don't have the HMI with you, but you have the PLC connected to your computer, or just in case um, you prefer to test this way because it can be faster to download. So in this case, this would allow you to um, receive the values that are coming in from your PLC 
um, you could write a new value to that PLC tag. Or if you're not connected to the PLC, you'll receive a communication error, which I'm going to demonstrate when we get to module two. Uh, 